century, it already become the largest city on earth, surviving earthquakes, fires and bombing. It's a city of contrast, giving you a glimpse of things to come and a reminder of things that have gone before. This is Tokyo. Tokyo is the capital of Japan, an island nation east of Russia and Korea. It's a huge port city of 13 million on the east coast of the main island, Honshu. Tokyo's heart is the Imperial Palace, around which runs the Yamanote Railway Line. I'll be using this to visit the ancient Sensoji Temple and the War Museum, the high-tech of Adaiba, and the nightlife centers of Shinjuku and Shibuya. I start my journey here in Asakusa, which is an old working class district. I actually start at this temple, Sensoji. Not only is it the most famous Buddhist temple in Tokyo, but it's also one of the oldest, dating back to the 7th century. Three spiritual philosophies have long influenced Japanese life. Shinto, Japan's native religion, reveres the natural world. Confucianism takes care of ethics and duty to family and ancestors. And Buddhism, worshipped here since the 6th century, seeks enlightenment through meditation. This is the incense burner, yeah? And what you're supposed to do is waft the smoke over the part of your body that ails you. The head. I'm actually in the main temple now. And apparently legend has it, yeah, that two fishermen found an image of Kanon, which is the goddess of compassion. And this whole temple is built round just to house that image, yeah? So I'm here sort of paying my respects and sort of hoping for a good trip. Right, I'm gonna use this because I need double fortune for my trip, yeah? You take a stick out of here, and on the stick is like a little symbol. You match it up with the drawers, and inside is like the fortune. Here we go. All best fortune, number 11. It's in English as well. You can get both treasure and dignity, and you'll be well known to people even in the capital, yeah? I like that one. Hi. Yeah, it's me. Hi. The spiritual calm of Sensoji Temple it's just what you need to prepare yourself for getting around Tokyo. I think the hard thing about transport is that you cannot read most of the signs because they're in Japanese, obviously. That makes it quite hard to, to commute as a non-Japanese speaking uh, guy. It's quite simple. I'm here in Shibuya, so now I know what line to get. I've got to go to Tokyo Station, so I've got to get this orange line, which is now the Ginza line, and then change to get on the red one, and nah, nearly there. Anyway, I'm gonna, let's just try it. Every day, over seven and a half million people use the two main subway systems and the numerous public and private lines that crisscross Tokyo. It's one of the world's most extensive transit systems and you can get pretty well everywhere. But avoid the morning and evening rush if you don't want to get squashed like a sardine. It's all a bit complicated, but it's been easier since Japan hosted the Soccer World Cup in 2002. And they came up with a system of numbers and symbols to help us hapless foreigners get around. Look at this, this is incredible. It's got all the information on the little TV screen on the train that you need to know, like what's the 
situation you're at, what line you're on, it's even got a map of what carriage you're in. The only trouble is, the next train you get, this might not be on there, so it can get a bit confusing. Tokyoites seem to use the subways as a way to wind down, sleeping or catching up on their manga comics. Choosing lunch is an easier prospect, as everything on the menu is reproduced in a mouth-watering plastic in every restaurant window. Oh yeah, look at that. All this plastic food yeah, is actually making me hungry. So I'm going to choose a restaurant that hasn't got plastic food yet. Japanese food is quite various. Uh, it's a complicated food, if we can say that, but uh, uh, very tasty and uh, you'll never get um, bored of, of uh, Japanese food. It's way different to the food, the Japanese food that we have at home. Like, um, the variations are much, much different, but it's really good. It's nice. Sometimes you have to let you surprise, but uh, uh, the people are very helpful and they usually succeed in explaining to you what it is, what you're eating. Oh yes, arigato. Oh look at that, lovely. This is like a ramen shop, yeah? And what ramen is, it's like, the Japanese national dish and there's thousands of these shops all over Tokyo and what you get basically it's like noodles with vegetables and it's cooked in a soup stock which is either pork chicken or fish let's get involved slurping your noodles is the Japanese way it shows you are devoting yourself to the bowl it's tasty and filling and at just a few dollars a portion, it's one of the best bargains in town. The great thing about Japan is, you don't, don't even have to tip them. Not that I'm tight. <laughs> Refueled, I'm leaving Osaka Sad by boat down the Sumida River to Adaiba for a night flight to a sake bar in Shibuya. Now I'm going to take a little trip into the future. I'm on the Sumida River and I'm going to Adaiba. And what that is, is a futuristic city that was built on reclaimed land when the Japanese economy was booming in the 80s. The Adaiba project encouraged the world's most adventurous architects and constructors to experiment in new techniques. It's like the urban planners were let loose and came up with a vision of a city from a Japanese sci-fi movie. That building there is the headquarters of Acai Beer and it was designed by a French architect called Philippe Stark. And the locals have got a quaint little nickname for it. They call it the <laughs> building. No idea where they get that from. Not surprisingly, a diver is the place where most Japanese high-tech companies showcase their wares. This is Panasonic's view of the future. Companies here use the domestic market as a testing ground for their new products before deciding what to unleash on the rest of the world. The rules of personal communication are being rewritten here. Many Japanese are starting to live in their own little cyber worlds. Their mobile phones are quite weird. I mean, you can do almost everything with it. I think they can even wash and cook. I don't know. It's, it's really interesting what they have. Look at this. You've got to check this out. This is incredible. It's a virtual map of the world. Any big city, just press on. That's Tokyo. And it zooms into the streets. And it's like a 3D map of the streets. Look at that. It's incredible. There's the Tokyo Tower. And look at this, you can actually move it around with your fingers. There it is, Tokyo Station. This is Panasonic's vision, the house of the future, yeah? This is my front door, right? I turn up, this is an iris recognition system. And then recognises your actual handprint and the door should open. Okay, okay. Oh. 
it opens this way, so you have to move around. Ian, what time do you call this? The oven has been slaving over dinner all evening, and it's furious. Jeffrey, what happened to just hello, welcome home, Ian? Yeah, you always have to go to this elaborate thing with me. Yeah, just calm down. All right. Now put the lights on, please. Okay, boss. Ah, welcome to my main room. Look at this. Check that out. That is a TV screen, and it's flat. Those two speakers are transparent, and you've got everything on there, internet, you do emails, watch films. This is my control panel. Yeah, I've had a hard day's work, so, oh, I'm going to just press, like, relaxation tape, yeah, because I want to chill out. Suitably relaxed, time for some excitement. One of the best ways to see Tokyo City is... Helicopter at night! I'm doing it! With an XL Air! Tokyo is like one of those towns that is definitely best at night. Because when it's all lit up like a Christmas tree, it's just fantastic. A half hour flight takes you over Tokyo's main sites and gives you a real sense of the massive scale. The whole urban sprawl down there houses over 22 million people. Back on the ground, I'm going to try some sophisticated sake sampling. This is Mr. Okawa, and I'm in his beautiful sake bar. As you can see, they specialize in the stuff, and they say that sake is the thing that keeps the fabric of Japanese society together. They have it when they're born, they have it when they get married, they even have it at funerals, and of course, all the bits in between. This is the Emperor's, and drunk by the celebrities. Yeah, that's the one for me. Lovely. Oh. Although it's called rice wine in the West, sake is brewed from rice and water, a bit like the process of beer making. Oh, yeah, I have another one. Mm. Each variety has its own subtle characteristics and can be drunk hot, at room temperature or cold. I can't even tell anymore, I've drunk so many. They're all a blur. Another day, another hangover. But what better to cure it than a lump of fresh raw fish? Pretty serious stuff here. And it looks like a Shakespeare play, but I know it ain't, yeah? It's five o'clock in the morning, yeah? And I've come to like the biggest wholesale fish market in the world. This is the daily bluefin tuna auction at Skiji Market. Some of these fish can weigh over 500 pounds and can cost $20,000. Hey, not bad for a day's fishing. A third of the fish consumed in Japan passes through Skiji Market every day, and that's a lot. There's over 400 different species of fish sold here every single day, but of course, this is my favorite. This is the famous, yeah, puffer fish, which is actually poison if it's not prepared correctly. And it's so dangerous, you actually need a license to buy the thing. Let's just... Oh, oh, oh. How could I resist that? All 
the shops around in the market sell something to do with like fishy products, like whether it's an apron or a pair of wellies or one of these like tuna hooks, you know, when you grab and drag the fish. But check these out. Look at that. In Japan, they do some of the best knives in the world. And the top sushi chefs sharpen their own knives. Say so that after a bottle of sake. And look at this. This is the best knife of all. This is like a thousand dollar knife there. And you can't open the blade unless you draw blood on someone. What are you doing, young lady? Can I just show you this? The Japanese are fascinated by fashion. Many spend more on their clothes than on the interiors of their homes. Image is everything. So I'm going to Harajuku with my friend Mayumi to see some of Tokyo's bright young things. This street is where all the young people come and wear all sort of mad gear. And the designers from the posh shops come down here and steal all their designs. Let's see if we can see some people wearing some strange gear. You're looking good. Well, I use that loosely. <laughs> Hi. 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 Yeah. Hi. What kind of fashion is this? This decorative. Right, Naomi, when it comes to fashion, whereabouts is Japan? At the top or down below? Not very top, but some of top the top fashion designers come to Japan and look at the street people and get some ideas from them to the next collection. Right, I'm going to try and pick up the vibe here, the fashion vibe. Medical student. She's a doctor and she's a nurse. How can you tell? There's quite a unique look about Japanese design. Why are the Japanese quite unique? Uh, I think we live very far away from Europe. So we just grown our own culture yeah. in, in Tokyo. And where, where do they get the inspiration from mainly, do you think, for their designs? Uh, maybe mainly like comic. Japanese ah, yeah, thing. Yeah. Wow, is that pirates? Pirate outfit. This is the best look I've seen today. Thank you very much. Look at that, it's lovely there. Oh. I'm not being rude, but you're a bunch of freaks, yeah? Bunch of freaks! Where's this fashion from? I love it, I love it. Uh, why am I here? Well, let's not beat around the bush here, because Tokyo can be a phenomenally expensive city. But if you do a bit of research, scout about, or even better, have a bit of local knowledge, then you can find some lovely, inexpensive gems. Sawanoya is a traditional inn, or rear can in the downtown area called Nesu. Inns like these are handed down through the family from generation to generation. Look at this. This is what I've been looking for. It's like a typically traditional Japanese inn. It's run by the Sawa family and it's got it all. It's got your tatami mat, it's got the futon, it's even got the paper windows and a bit of tea. And it's only like $45 a night, which, trust me, is cheap. You don't get an ensuite bath, but the shared one is certainly big enough. in a few moments to relax and wash off the heat of the day will set me up for the sights, sounds and tastes of Tokyo nightlife. If you're after a real Japanese experience without breaking the bank, head under the railway tracks at Shinjuku Station. Places like this is why I love Tokyo so much. It's like a ball of contrast. One street is like high tech, high rise, neon lights, and then you go down a little alley like this and it's like stepping back in time or stepping on a Blade Runner set. It's brilliant. Whoa. Oh yes, yes, let's have some of them. Cheers, cheers. Oh, this is fantastic. This is Shinjuku. 
And if you're feeling a bit peckish, you come down to the, one of these yakitori bars, and they sell so much food, and it's so quick. They've been here about 50 years, but sadly, like a lot of places, the developers are moving in, and they're going to like get rid of them soon. Mm. Okay. Have only had one sip. Okay. Oh. Well, I've noticed here yeah, a little traveller's tip for you. If you don't understand any of the food, you can buy these things in the plastic food that you see outside the shop. And then you go, oh, can I have that? <laughs> That's English cuisine, that. Good, oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go, bacon and egg. Have a little bite. Good, eh? Oh. I'm heading out of Tokyo today for the Kanto Matsuri, one of Japan's biggest summer festivals. I'm going 400 miles to the northwest region of Japan's main island, Honshu, to the port city of Akita on the Shinkansen 180 mile an hour bullet train. If you're planning to move around a lot, the cheapest way is to pick up a Japan rail pass before you come. This is the northern town of Akita, yeah? And I got up this morning to watch these guys practice with these lanterns on various parts of their body for the Kanto Festival, which happens tonight. The Kanto are bamboo poles, up to 30 foot tall. The lanterns hanging on the poles symbolize grains of rice. Locals balance these Kanto on their palms, foreheads, shoulders and waists. This competition is unbelievable. Not only do they have to balance all the lanterns on their heads and on the sides and that, but they also got to keep their feet inside this circle. Hey! This is it, this is my big moment I've been waiting for. It looked easy enough, yeah, when I was on the sideline. Hold that. Hold that. And up. There. Oh. Yeah, okay. Look up, okay. Look at that. Oh, what the that? Oh, yeah. Whoa. Oh, there's no wind. Right, here we go. One end. One end. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Well, I'm in the team. I'll see you tonight, yeah? Down there. I knew that would happen. I'm in the team tonight, aren't I? Oh, better get some practicing for the shoulder. You got a headband? Come night time, the lanterns are lit and the parade begins. Japanese love any excuse for a festival, and the Kanto is supposed to banish the lethargy brought on by the long hot summers in hope of a bountiful rice harvest. Here we go. One, two, three. Oi. Oi. Okay. Yep. Right hand down. I can't. I can't. Oh. 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 Whoops. I was oh, lost. Okay. Well, that's it for me. The festival's winding down now, yeah? But it's been brilliant, yeah, it's been more than good. Mates, you're just like mixing with everyone. It's like, it's like Woodstock all America. over again. America! <laughs> Get out, English, go on! <laughs> yeah, England, London. Having got back to the city, I'm visiting the Imperial Palace, the Yasukuni Shrine and the War Museum before learning the way of the samurai. 
Well, I'm back in Tokyo now, and behind me is one of the most expensive pieces of real estate on earth, the Imperial Palace. And it was estimated in the economic boom of the 80s that this piece of land was more expensive than the whole of California. This has been the home to the Imperial family since Emperor Meiji moved here from Kyoto in 1868. The palace was bombed during the Second World War and not fully repaired until 1968. Just over the road from the Imperial Palace Gardens is Japan's most controversial shrine. This Tori Gate marks the passage from Earth to Paradise for Japan's war dead. Japanese believe that future peace is assured by praying for the spirits of those who gave their lives defending their country. They are remembered here at the Yasukuni Shrine. Opposite the shrine is Tokyo's oldest museum, founded in 1882. Yushu Kan is a war museum telling the story of Japan's military history. Back in the 12th century, a warrior class called the Samurai was established. Their code of conduct was called Bushido, the way of the warrior. A samurai would rather kill himself than bring shame on his master. And although the samurai class was abolished in the 1870s, Bushido was never forgotten. In the 11th century, mighty storms believed to be divine winds or kamikaze prevented a Mongol invasion of Japan. In the Second World War, kamikaze was the name given to young men who in the spirit of Bushido carried out suicide missions in their last desperate attempt to defend their homeland. This human torpedo is one of the kamikaze suicide weapons. This thing here is a piloted bomb. It would be carried piggyback by another aeroplane, then released, and the pilot inside there would direct it straight onto the target. And it's called Cherry Blossom. This is an engine used on the Burma Thai Railway, but there's no mention in the museum of the thousands of prisoners that died building it. And still now, the wounds have yet to heal, and for some, they never will. Japan has been a peaceful nation since the end of World War II. These days, the only contact with the samurai past is to be found in the traditional martial arts. This is Tabushi Sensei, showing the samurai way to defend yourself from an attack of a vicious gang of rolled up tatami mats. Actually, the mats simulate the texture of a human limb, and Sensei San is one of Japan's great masters of freestyle sword fighting. Ace Yamaguchi, his number two, is gonna show me some basic moves. Your little finger tight, yeah. other fingers loose. Right. Got a bit carried away there, don't that happens. You? Got a bit cocky. Yes. Relax, then go. Oh, that felt good. I felt the power then. I enjoyed that oh, yes, one. Right. I enjoyed it too much. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you very much. That's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Look at that. Someone's bowing that is there. That's a beautiful cup. This here is Sports Chambala and it's like a freestyle sword fighting and I'm going to have a little <laughs> Kabuchi Sensei runs a dojo or gym where he teaches the style of sword fighting called Chambara. They use inflatable swords but don't be fooled, it's serious business. The lady in the red is a world champion. Humans are caught! I'm leaving Tokyo again, heading for one of Japan's greatest icons, the sleeping volcano, Mount Fuji. Taking the train from Shinjuku station is probably the best way to travel the 60 miles. Buses also run from Shinjuku, but in the short climbing season from July to August, 
seems like the whole of Tokyo is driving to the mountain. I'm meeting Ginger, my guide, here at the fifth station, probably the best starting point. We begin by getting a blessing from the ancestors of the Shinto temple before going to take a look at the mountain. Of course, part of its spiritual aura is that Fujiyama, using its full name, is rarely seen through the mist. So it's definitely there somewhere, yeah? Yes, I promise. Yeah, you sure? If you going straight, we'll find it. The classic conical shape of the volcano that seems to rise out of nowhere has given Mount Fuji a religious symbolism for the Japanese as a gateway between Earth and Heaven. From the fifth station at 7,500 feet, I'm climbing to the main eighth station at 11,000 feet before the last push to the summit. It's absolutely it's amazing. amazing. It's very spiritual and mm -hmm. very serene because you're like sitting on top of the mountain. You're, you're above the clouds. Down, you're looking down the clouds. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. It's beautiful. beautiful. It can be 40 degrees in the valley and near freezing at the summit. So bring some warm clothes, waterproofs and strong boots. So Ginger, we must be halfway to the hut now, yeah? <laughs> Not quite, but right now Maybe we're that laugh. in between the 5th and 7th station, between the 6th and 7th station, right. at about 2,500 meters. And that hut, the 6th station there, Hanagoya, marks 2,700 meters. That's, uh, that's where we're heading we're now, yeah? We're going to stay at the last hut on the eighth, main 8th station. That's about 3,200 meters. Wow. So you'll be lucky if you can sleep at that altitude, but... But that's where we're staying to sleep, are you? Yeah. How many times did you climb Mount Fuji? Um, including today, yeah. it makes 24. 24 times? Yeah. As the sun sets and the temperature drops, we arrive at one of the first huts or stations where we can have a short rest and buy some provisions. Look at this shop, it's like Aladdin's cave, it's got everything. Drinks, water, chocolate bars, peanuts, dried squid. Uh, what's this? Uh, it's bottled oxygen. Bottled oxygen? Yeah. Wow. So if, you, if it's too thin, you suck on this? Right, well you turn this cap over and it becomes a mask. And you connect it to here and press on it. And <laughs> get a bunch I'm, of oxygen. I'm going to get some of this. I've got a feeling I'm going to need this. We'll have one. Well, do you want one? I'm good, I'm okay. Oh yeah? Well, yeah. You're hardened, isn't it? Dark, isn't it? We've been walking in total darkness for a couple of hours now, but at last I can see the Red Tory Gate above, which marks the hut where we're going to spend the night. Finally, we've reached the main ape station, just below the summit. We're going to take a rest for a couple of hours. My fellow pilgrims prefer a wait outside, huddled in the thin mountain air. But I'm feeling the effects of the attitude and have booked a futon. I never thought I'd be so happy to see a hut hanging off the side of a mountain. This is beautiful. Oh, but I've got to get some kit because apparently we're up at like three in the morning to head to the summit. It's only 300 metres away, but it's going to take an hour and a half. But it will be worth it. The next morning, having had a lousy night's sleep, Ginger and I set off into what looks like a mountain rush hour. It's like everyone in Tokyo has been following me here. Oh, Ooh, beautiful there. Nightmare there. Oh, it's like a circus. Is this your first time up the mountain? It is, it is. Yeah. Yeah, I've been planning to do it for many a year, but uh, yeah. this is the first time around. <laughs> Worth it? I think so. Yeah. yeah. What about that last two hours? Yeah, this is, this is a bit of a, 
uh, a new experience. I've never <laughs> seen so many people on the mountain. It's incredible. And any man, it? it's, it's a joke. Yeah. But I must admit, it is stunning, yeah. isn't it? Despite the crowds, sunrise on Mount Fuji is something to behold. It's almost worth the climb, but I do think there is a lot of truth in the old saying, a wise man climbs Fuji once, only a fool climbs it twice. Look at that. That's the middle of Mount Fuji there, that's the crater, and an amazing force of nature made that. An amazing force of nature is going to get me off this mountain. Come on, Ginger! Okay. Go! I'm back in Tokyo and keeping up the fitness with a bicycle. Rental's not cheap, around five a day, and I'm not sure about the air here either. But it's a good way to see a city if you can stand the summer heat. Oh, it's so hot. It's 35 degrees here in Tokyo, but luckily you've got these vending machines that serve every drink under the sun. In fact, they're all over Japan. You can get like teas, green teas, coffees, you can get like high energy drinks, you can get mineral water, you can get fruit juice. I've just gone for, oh, nice cold plain water. Living in a volcanic region does have some advantages. I'm visiting a hot spring, or onsen, as the Japanese call them. This one's right in the heart of Tokyo, an oasis of calm in the bustling metropolis. Like a lot of things in Japan, there's always a ritual involved. Before you actually oh, go into the onsen, you've got to give your body a good, good clean. Oh, I give yourself a good scrub down. There are many of these places all over the country and the Japanese swear by the health benefits of the minerals in the hot water. Most onsen have separate male and female pools where you're expected to bathe naked. Some have communal pools where you can wear costumes if you're feeling a bit coy. But hey, not for me of course. Festival time again and another trip on the Shinkansen. This time I'm going 450 miles from Tokyo's Ueno Station to Aomori, way up in the northern tip of Honshu. Aomori is a resort town and many Tokyoites come up here to escape the city and enjoy the sand, the sea and the clean air. You might spot a few beach sumo wrestlers soaking up the sun. But I'm here for the Nabuta Festival. Nabuta are floats made out of paper, representing legendary stories. They date back to the 9th century, when a beleaguered general built a large Nabuta to frighten the enemy. Today, they take a year to make, and are judged before the winners are placed on barges and pushed out into the bay. In a couple of hours' time, all these floats that you see are suddenly going to come alive. Managed to get a part in the parade with the Nabuta, sponsored by Amori City Hall. Is that made out of just paper on structures? Yeah, it's a, it's a metal frame, yeah. and then they stick each individual piece of paper on, and then there's about 800 to 1,000 light bulbs inside. Wow. Let's hope it doesn't rain, eh? What will I be doing? What will be my key role? Your key role will be to, like, all the, each float has a set of dancers. Yeah. And the dancers dance in front of the float right. and just get the crowd going and get the crowd interested oh, in really? the float coming along. Like court gesture? Yeah. So I'll be dancing into the crowd. Yeah. You just have to, like, make a fool of yourself. And then you... Really? Oh, that's going to be a little bit difficult in this <laughs> outfit. How can I do that? Oh, oh is it about to begin? Yeah. Come on, where's our float? Let's get to our float! Come on! That's why he's got them arrows in him. Here it comes! I'm gonna get trampled!
and these are supposed to have a reputation for being formal, but all year round they throw these spectacular celebrations and go completely nuts. See, the thing is, when you're a bit knackered because you've been dancing, you need a little pick-me-up. And what's better than a little bit of sake? Can I have some? Yeah? Yeah! Oh, is that a bit small for me? I need a bigger pot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah! Whoa, let's get back in there! Well, it's my last day in Tokyo and it's a Saturday and I'm going to the Tokyo Dome to watch some baseball. I've come to watch the most popular team, the Yomiuri Giants. Japan loves American culture and not surprisingly, some of the team's biggest stars are American. This is Tuffy Rhodes. Japanese people, if one comes up, then about a hundred are going to come up. Right, if, so nobody yeah. come up, then nobody's going to come up. So yeah. if I just kind of keep my head down and, and keep a straight face, I can probably get where I want to go. Yeah. Are you the top home run hitter? Yes. How many have you hit? 38 so far. 38. How many games is that? Um, 106. So we have 106. We got 35, 34 more games to play. Yeah. Excellent. Hey, I hope you hit one tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Thanks. If you want some help, I'll be there. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. I'll be looking for you. It's a real family event with lots of fun for the kids, blending a great American sport with typically obscure Japanese cartoon fun. It's more family based I think in Japan and in the States that your team loses there could be a riot. Here it doesn't seem like there's going to be a riot. It's, it's just good fashion fun here. Their scores aren't normally as high as ours, they get some that are up there but for the most part it's, it's pretty much the same game but if you like defense it's definitely better out here. Don't disturb me. My team won. Well, even if I had to change sides halfway through. So I'm off to celebrate. Tokyo is a 24 hour town, and the club life is the ultimate expression of the craziness of people in Tokyo. This is Alcatraz ER, typical of the city's bizarre nightclubs. Hey, look at this This is absolutely insane. Yeah. And look, I'm, I just got to check out the cells. I'm taking, this is, I'm taking my drink with me, yeah? This is like, got my drink in. Look at that. Whoa, hi there. When you left out, two years you got. Hey. Hi there. How long have you got in the cell? Two years? I'm not quite sure yet. <laughs> Let me come in and join you. Yeah, I'm going to sure, come sure, and sure, give sure. you a cell search. Yeah, cell yeah. search. Are there a lot of mad bars like this in Tokyo? I've been to another one called Lock Up, and that's more like. Um, Lock Up? Yeah. Which is pretty much the same sort of um, theme. The yeah. thing is, it's more sort of like scary horror type, right? And you're still locked up in a cell, but you got your own cell where it's all walled off. Yeah, but it's remarkably like just like this. This has just got a nice little medical theme. Yeah, it, yeah? fully. And there's rooms down there where you can get operated on. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. I've seen someone on the table there, and the nurses come round and do all sorts of things. It's disgusting. <laughs> Anyway, thanks a lot. Cheers. I just got to go. Yeah, I'm getting a bit claustrophobic. Yeah, yeah. I've just got to... I know what you mean. Nurse, can you let me out? Nurse. <laughs>
Well, it's quite fitting that I should end my journey after a night on the town here in Shibuya. This crossroads represents the creative energy and the fast pace of life here in Tokyo. And if New York is a city that never sleeps, then Tokyo is the city that doesn't even stop to take a breath. So, sayonara Tokyo. I'm gonna go get some more.